Stop pulling down our statues. It doesn't change history. The latest case of historical vandalism comes not from angry blue-haired mobs, but from so-called elected councils and unaccountable civil servants. Putting aside the fact that these councils are a year overdue for elections, meaning we have not voted for them, the British people did not elect these councils to topple historical statues. Neither do the majority of British people want our history censored. It is only a vocal minority. The leftist ideology behind historical vandalism boils down to their belief that even if someone has achieved more good than bad, but their life doesn't fit in the parameters of woke history, then they are not fit to be remembered. This political mental gymnastics occurs regardless of whether an individual built London or other major cities, defeated tyrannical ideologies like Nazism, or made substantial, charitable efforts. The most common allegation the left used to censor our history is links to slavery, which every nation participated in at the time, and was outlawed by Britain in 1833, almost 200 years ago. Now, I don't personally believe the left actually cares about slavery. If they did, they'd be smashing their iPhones and other electronics for having lithium batteries, which are largely sourced from mines which use slave labour in Africa. Or they'd be burning their designer clothes, which are most likely made in sweatshops. Likewise, I've never seen a lefty protest for ending modern slavery, despite experts estimating there are over 10,000 slaves currently in Britain. But I have seen them protest and use any excuse they can to smear British history and pull down statues of British historical figures. My question for the left, though, is why do they only go after some figures with mixed pasts and not others? Why are only some people expected to be perfect and others aren't? Churchill defeated the Nazis, but they want to pull him down because he said some mean words, despite his actions reflecting that he was overall a good person. Yet when campaigners lobbied to remove Gandhi's statue in Leicester due to allegations that he was a racist, the woke mob rushed to his defence, with even a Labour MP sticking up for him. If someone were to criticise the existence of the statue of Nelson Mandela in a prime location in Westminster because he was a communist who orchestrated bombings that killed civilians and the organisation he represented, the ANC, run by his wife at the time, used to necklace black workers employed by white people, we would be called horrible racists. For reference, necklacing is where someone puts a car tyre around your neck, pours petrol over you and sets it on fire, burning you alive which unfortunately was commonplace amongst revolutionaries in South Africa. With our necklaces, we shall liberate this country. <laughs> what about Karl Marx's statue in London? Why aren't the left calling for the creator of an ideology that killed 70 to 100 million people to have his statue pulled down? Now, most sensible people are able to accept that no one is perfect, and we can judge people based on their actions. The aforementioned Churchill, Gandhi and Mandela, not so much Marx, did more good than bad, Hence why we remember them. Mandela even described himself as not a saint. In the case of Marx, I still don't advocate pulling down his statue, as it's pointless virtue signalling that doesn't change history. No one in history is infallible, and we can find issue with everyone if we wanted to, from Martin Luther King to Mother Teresa. But we remember those who have been instrumental in affecting the world for the better. So have a think. Are we only going to remember infallible people? If so, then we won't really be remembering anyone. Or do we remember those where their good actions outweigh their bad?